Well hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Now today I'm going to be making some brioche swirls which are filled with uh, creme patissiere and uh, chocolate chips. Now I recently made uh, brioche and uh, it's a lovely soft dough so I'm going to follow the same recipe for that and I should say that the recipe is in three parts for the dough that is. The first part is you make the dough and you prove it for two hours or until it doubles in size. The second part is where you knock it back and then you uh, prove it again in the fridge for at least seven hours, maybe overnight. And the third part is take it out of the fridge and use it basically. Now you could miss out the second part if you don't want to wait the seven hours. I just think it slightly affects how soft the, the dough the bread will be and uh, the flavour slightly but you don't have to do that so you could miss that out if you wanted to speed things up. Um, now uh, I only have one camera working today because uh, I've got uh, computer problems and I'm waiting for a new computer with a new program for editing and I didn't want to use two cameras and complicate the editing process so I hope everything works fine uh, for that. And what we'll do is we'll go on and we'll talk about the ingredients and we'll mix the ingredients. Now for the ingredients, I have 500 grams of uh, strong white bread flour. Then I have 50 grams of caster sugar, uh, 140 milliliters of uh, milk, this is whole milk, and I've got this uh, at a temperature of about 43 uh, Celsius, which is 110 Fahrenheit. So you want it warm, but not hot. I have 10 grams of instant yeast. That's one and a half of those little uh, sachets. I have uh, six grams of salt, five medium eggs, which would be large in the USA. And I have 250 grams of uh, softened butter. It's just room, tem room temperature and a little bit warmer. Now 225 grams would be two sticks so another 25 grams would be just under two more tablespoons. So two sticks and two tablespoons would work fine. Uh, 500 grams of bread flour would work out at about four cups of bread flour. So the first thing to do Oh, sorry, I should say the sugar, 50 grams of sugar is a quarter of a cup. The first thing to do is to put the flour into a processor. Now, you could do this by hand, but it's a, a, an awful lot of work to do it all by hand. And then um, on one side of the flour, I'm going to put the salt and the sugar. And then on the other side of the flour, I'm going to put... The yeast. You don't want the yeast to get too close to the salt because the salt will kill it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the milk and the eggs. And I'm going to mix that on a slow speed for two minutes to start with. And then I'm going to add the butter and mix it uh, for longer, oh, no sorry, two, speed, two uh, minutes to start with, then we'll speed it up for another uh, six to eight minutes. Okay, I'm going to scrape down my bowl just a little bit and then I'm going to uh, increase the speed uh, to medium and I'm going to um, work this mixture for another six to eight minutes until it uh, forms into a smooth sticky dough. So having mixed our dough for uh, between six to eight minutes it's now nice and soft and it's going to be very very sticky 
what I'm going to do is add in uh, the softened butter and I'm going to put it in a little bit at a time, three chunks to start with, and mix it. And we want to mix this again for uh, another five to six minutes until all the butter is incorporated. That may require you to scrape down the bowl to get it all mixed in. Okay, so all my butter is incorporated now and it's going to be very, very sticky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put that into a greased bowl. So it's lightly greased with, I've just put some oil in it and spread it around. I'm going to tip this into the bowl and then I'm going to just simply cover it and allow it to rise until it doubles in size and that should take one and a half to two hours I would think in the heat that I have in my kitchen. And you don't need to do any shaping or anything at that time because it's so sticky. You simply want to cover it. And leave it in a warm place. And so with that covered, we'll leave it in a, a warm place to uh, prove until it doubles in size and then uh, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. We'll knock it back and then I'm going to chill mine for seven hours. But as I said, you don't need to do that if you don't want to. So I'll be back in a couple of hours when it's doubled in size. Well, it's been two hours now uh, since our dough went into our bowl. So what I'm going to do is take the lid off and I'm going to knock it back to get the air out of it. Then I'm going to uh, put it in the fridge and leave it for seven hours. So I'll show you what it looks like now. So that's what it looks like and you can see it's, it's more than doubled in size. And what I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to very lightly flour my hand and pat it down. I'm going to scrape it as well. So with that knocked back, I'm going to um, cover it again 
and um, I'm going to put it into the fridge and leave it for seven hours. That's the step that you don't have to do if you don't want to. Now, while that's uh, in the fridge chilling, I'm going to go on and make uh, the creme patissiere. Um, and if you're going to uh, not do this chilling step, you would need to have made the creme patissiere earlier, but I'll go on to make it, show you how to do that, because then we want that to cool down. So I'll be back when I've set up to make the creme patissiere. I've got everything together to make the creme patissiere. So we'll go on to the, uh, those ingredients, starting with 280 millilitres of whole milk in a pan, which is gently heating. Uh, that would be half a cup plus two thirds of a cup. And I want to heat that until it's just about boiling. And then for the other ingredients, I have Four egg, medium egg yolks, that would be large in the USA. 60 grams of caster sugar, uh, that's uh, a quarter of a cup and one dessert spoon or two teaspoons. Uh, 25 grams of um, plain flour, and that would be um, about two uh, tablespoons I think, two yeah about two tablespoons and I have uh, two teaspoons which is just about 10 grams of corn flour and I also have one teaspoon of vanilla extract so uh, I'm going to put the sugar into the eggs and I'm going to whisk those until they're uh, thick and pale. And that looks quite good. So what I'm going to do with that now is I'm going to pour in the vanilla extract and the flour and um, the corn flour and I'm going to mix those until they're all combined as well And with that mixed, and our milk is just uh, below boiling, I'm going to take that off the heat and I'm going to pour it into the egg mixture. And give it a mix around. And then I'm going to return the mixture to the saucepan. And I need to scrape that down. to get it in, but it's very important at this stage that we keep whisking as we put it back onto the heat and bring it to up to the boil. We have to keep whisking so that it uh, doesn't form any lumps.
Then I'm going to pour that thickened creme pat into a bowl. Now, if yours had gone lumpy, then you can solve that problem by putting it through a strainer, but mine is fine. And then the last thing I'm going to do is simply to cover that with some plastic wrap. And in this instance, the plastic wrap needs to be touching the surface of the creme pat. So that it doesn't form a skin. So you just put the plastic wrap down like that. And then we're going to let that cool completely before we use it. So our dough has now chilled uh, for at least seven hours and we have our creme patissiere made and I also have available 100 grams of um, milk chocolate chips or chunks. Uh, you could use dark chocolate and I won't need the whole 100 grams but I've got that, that, that was the packet basically. So what we're going to do is to tip our dough out onto a floured work surface and it's still very sticky so we need to make sure that we flour it to make uh, so that it doesn't stick as we roll it out um, into a rectangle ready for creating our swirls. So we'll take some flour first of all and I'm going to fairly liberally I think in this instance just spread that over the counter and then we're going to tip the dough out and um, if the dough when you're chilling it in the fridge reaches the top you can always knock it back again which is what I did with mine because it it did come up to the top of my bowl again And as you can see, it's still very, very sticky. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to, for the time being, turn that over so I can coat it in flour and it's easier to work with once it's chilled like this because it's a little bit firmer. And then I'm going to roll that out into a rectangle which is about a third of an inch in thickness in all probability. And if it starts to stick you put a bit more flour on. just going to check that that's not sticking because if it sticks we're going to need to 
flower the underside a bit more. Hopefully that will be enough. So with our dough in a fairly rough rectangle like that, what I'm going to do is take the creme patissiere and I'm going to spread that over the dough but I'm going to leave a margin along the top edge of between an inch and uh, half an inch And with that spread, like that, what I'm going to do is sprinkle chocolate chips over it. And I think, I actually think about 50 grams is probably... And so with the chocolate chips, as many or as few as you, you want, I suppose, once they're on there, we're going to roll this up. Now, for my way of thinking, there are two ways. You can either start here and roll it up to this bit where we've left a little bit of a margin, um, and then cut into pieces, or you could, if you wanted to, divide into pieces and with a uh, with a uh, pizza wheel or something you could try to um, cut those but I'm going to roll mine like this into a sausage shape as tightly as you can but without pushing all the chocolate up as you go and then with your sausage rolled like that you can cut that into 12 pieces so I'm going to mark mine roughly in half and in half like that and then each of those into three like that and then cut them sharply like that pick it up and turn it over and then place it onto a baking sheet that you've lined with parchment paper now these are going to grow and spread so you don't want to put too many on one baking tray and then uh, with our uh, brioche swirls rolled out onto the baking tray like that, we need to um, let them prove again uh, until they've just about doubled in size, which would take again between an hour and two hours. 
and for that we need to cover them um, with some plastic wrap which has been oiled so that it doesn't stick to the tops or you could place them into large plastic bags um, as long as they're not touching and then after an hour and a half to two hours we're going to bake them and for that we need our oven preheating to 190 celsius that's 170 celsius with a fan 375 fahrenheit and then i will come back um, in an hour and a half to two hours and show you how they've risen and we'll put them into the oven and we'll bake them so i've let our um, swirls uh, prove again for um, about an hour and 25 minutes and they look quite good and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to brush some uh, egg over them and then I'm going to just sprinkle a little bit of pearl sugar on you don't need to but brushing the egg will help give them a nice color as they bake and I have my oven preheating as I said before at 190 celsius that's 170 celsius with a fan 375 Fahrenheit. So let's get on and uh, brush the egg wash over. So I'm just going to brush all round. As you can see, they've risen quite nicely again. Now I actually think I probably should really only have put four onto each of these baking trays. Um, so they may actually touch each other in baking. It doesn't matter, of course. Uh, but if you want them to be nice and brown all over without a white patch where you've torn them apart. And so with the egg washed over them like that, I'm just going to take some pearl sugar and sprinkle a, a few little pearls onto each one. Of course, you don't have to do that. And with that done, I'm going to put them into the oven now and I'm going to bake them for 20 to 25 minutes. They should turn a nice golden brown and they will expand uh, even more in the oven. Then I'll, I'll take them out and leave them to cool for a couple of minutes on the baking tray and then gently transfer them to a wire rack to cool down completely then I'll come back and show you the results. So I baked our uh, creme patissiere and chocolate brioche swirls. They're out of the oven and I've allowed them to cool down so they're they're quite cool now. So uh, I'll show you them. And this is what they look like. They bake quite nicely. They, they spread a little bit. I, maybe I should have put just four on each baking tray. But uh, they've turned out very nicely. So we'll have a taste. So it's nice and soft. Very light, this brioche. And you get that creme patissiere. Some of it has seeped just a little bit into the bread, but there's um, a nice coating of it as well in each of the swirls. It tastes very good. And then, then of course you get the chocolate. So all in all, I'm very pleased with these. I hope you've enjoyed them, the video at least. And if you have, please give me the thumbs up below the video and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen, as ever, there will be an eye that you can click on uh, and that will take you to the recipe and I'll put a link to that below the video as well and I'll be back with you with another recipe in the very near future so until then happy baking